Hello everybody. This improv story is based on an idea man needs a shite at a funeral. Now in one of my other stories, somebody said, these stories are only realistic. And they were actually talking about stories that weren't like, oh a guy goes into a fucking magical painting. They're talking about something that probably wouldn't happen, that's all. We'll see this. This here will be ultra realistic. This 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 would happen. Um ladies and gents, let's story commence. There's a guy called uh, Craig and uh, his mom and dad uh, died. His mom and dad died pretty, pretty close to each other. Put it this way, it's a joint, joint funeral. Um, the dad died. Um, Next night, um, the moss seemed fine. The night after that, uh, she she got a lot a lot of pills, and uh, she passed away. So it was a joint, um, joint funeral. The son had to uh, organise it all. He was only twenty five. He had to organise it all with the help of aunties and uncles and things like that, so they're chipping in. Um, devastated. He was a single child. He's obviously hot. Why did why did she know stay to take care of me? Um, you know, that kind of, I suppose he was 25, but... Don't know, so many emotions going through his head. Um, so he's done the front row, obviously, and he's been asked to say a few words. He met up with, like the Reverend and all that. And, like, so can you tell us a wee bit about this? Can you tell us what what is it they were into? And um, keep in mind, remember that that with regards to your your mother, um, you know Jesus, um, what the teachings of Jesus telling us, he is he's forgiven of all. All sins. He's like, sorry, I don't. What do you mean? Well, if I've, I've heard correctly, I'm so I'm so sorry if I'm overstepping my mark here. But she she took her took her life, and you've probably heard. I don't know if you're religious yourself, but you probably heard stories about suicide as a as a as a as against God's will and that's eternal. Punishment and things like that, but I want you to remember that Jesus forgives everyone. Jesus forgives everyone. And he's like, right, well, I'm, I don't really believe in that myself. I know you do. It's not really. I, I, I've got other things on my mind. Like, why, why, why should I? Sure, sure. I'm just. I didn't know if you're religious or not, so that you're not. So in a way, that's that's good. Sometimes, I'm not too happy to hear somebody is religious but I suppose in this case I am sorry I sort of am speaking insensitively here no no it's fine it's fine it's fine but can I ask you more about your mum and your dad and what did she like, like to do and what about your dad did he like anything like maybe watching the football or I mean, like doing this okay these are the things I'm going to say now would you would you be liking would you be wanting to get up and say a few words yourself um um I don't, I don't really know. That's fine if you don't. That's fine if you don't. You know, but, you know, it may help. I don't know, it may help. You're young, you're still young. You're 25, you may think you're not, you're not, you're an adult, but you are still really young compared to me anyway. It might help you to just get up there and just say a few thoughts, you know, maybe prepare something or just say, you know, it's up to you. Right, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. In fact, no, I'll do it. I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to do it. Okay, okay, that's great, that's great. At the funeral, he's sitting down the front row. The reverend's chatting away. And... 
Craig Senior. He was a fan of the football. Craig Senior was a fan of the football. He would often watch his favourite club, uh, Glasgow Celtic, much to the dismay of his wife, Mary, who was a Glasgow Rangers fan. So, they would always, you know, always argue over their son Craig about how he was, how he was a good Rangers boy or a good Celtic boy. And it was the cause of many, many, and, and Craig's thinking, I think it's about this time and I'm meant to get up because he's going to say, he says, because they've chatted about it. And now, talking of Craig, Craig wants to come up and say a few words. He knew that was coming, that's coming in about a minute. And he's ready to get up, he's ready to, he's ready to get up and he's thinking, oh fuck. Oh fuck. I'm fucking dying. Dying for a shite. Dying for a shite. I think it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Absolutely dying for a shite. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. But he knew, if I'm dying for a shite and I'm sitting down, when I stand up, I'll really be dying for a shite. Because the way he's always felt in the past is, whenever he's dying for a shite, sitting down, kind of keeps it in. Stoning up. Moves, kind of loosens it all a bit. And he's like, I need to go for a shite. So he's thinking about, he's thinking about honestly, going like that, and running to the toilet, hoping that people just think, he's, he's, just, he's just a wee bit teary-eyed. It completely took his mind off of the, the, the situation. He's thinking it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. But it was really, really bad and he had a good 10 minutes planned. He was like really, really straining because that morning he was meeting this person, that person, shaking horns. Thanks for coming, I'll see you there. He never had any time. He had some people at the house before they came to the funeral and they were all clogging up the toilet. I don't mean literally clogging it up with their shite, but he could never get away, never get away, never get away. Um. Absolute busting for a shite. So he's ready to get up. He's ready to go up. I need, need to go. He's going to go. Hopefully people thought, think he's just upset. And that's why he's heading to the toilet. You don't want people to know you're there. Sh- everybody knows that everybody does a shite. But you don't want people to be utterly aware. Where's he going? He's away for a shite. He stood up. Ready to walk. Oh, Craig. Craig's wanting to get up. Now, Craig, okay. No, the driver had walked away. So he went up, like, alright. Because otherwise there'd be nobody there. People were gone like that. <coughs> the second he stood up, he, he farted, he farted a wee bit. It was, it, it was accompanied by a creak at the bench. So he thought he got away with it, but he could smell it coming after him. You know, like, you know, like if a lorry passes you as you're, as you're standing at a, a, a pavement, it goes past you, and, and you feel like kind of whoosh as it sort of pulls you towards, it's, you know, backdraft or whatever you, I don't know what you'd call it. You know, like, it's pulling, it actually pulls you towards the fucking thing. He almost pulled the fart back like a fucking, like it was on a, like a bungee fucking cord. He thought, if I can smell that, they can smell that. So he thought, I want I need to get away. So he went up and started talking. And he tried to remember. Um, my mum... Oh, fuck, he used to start by talking about his dad. Because he died first. My dad... Sometimes say to me, whenever I got depressed, I 
saw it yourself out. Cheer, cheer up. When I was a teenager, cheer up. And and um, he was a bit old school, old school guy. He says, cheer up. He saw it yourself out. He was one of the old school. And my mum was uh, was a bit more sympathetic. And I've been wondering if if only he was a wee bit more like me if he would be if 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 my mum would still be here. But, and he went like because mm, it was like a fucking phantom phantom shagger. Have you ever had the phantom shagger? It's not even when you're needing a shite. It's like you feel like somebody's fucking rammed a cock or a finger up your ass. You know, you just happen to be stoning about. And then this happens. Mm. Mm. Like that. The Phantom Shagger. Do you ever get the Phantom Shagger? I mean, I just sort of stoning it. I've not had it for a while, mind you, but you're just sort of stoning there. Or you could be sitting. I've not had it for a while, quite a while. But you're just sort of stoning there. And then. Oh fuck, you alright? Mm. Mm. Oh. It's not like a nip. It's not like a nip. It's like a fucking, fucking that rammed right up you, man. Oh. Um. Well, he was kind of like that. Because mm. he's fucking holding this shit in. And some people, you could hear some people going like that. Because oh. they thought he was like this, like. <laughs> and he turned it into that. You know, if she would still be here. <laughs> if she would still... Somebody get him down. He's like too upset. If she would still be here today. I think maybe because of some of the things my dad would say to me when I was down. Uh, down, sorry. That maybe rubbed off on my mum. Maybe my mum felt that she couldn't tell me she was down. And because of that, she bottled up and felt that the only way, I don't know, I'm just going, I'm, I'm, some people. Oh, get something to get him off. Something to get him off, he's too upset. Craig, come on, come on, it's alright. I'm fine, I'm fine. And he is thinking, he was thinking to himself, this could be a good reason, this could be a good excuse to get off of you. But he was in flow. He was in flow. He had this stuff to say. He had this stuff to say. And he said, because I'll be honest with you, I want to be honest with you about my feelings, everybody, to anybody that this is affected by some of these things. I'm angry. I'm sad and I'm confused and I'm angry. Anger is how I'm dealing with this right now. I'm angry at my mum for leaving me. I'm angry at my dad for dying, funnily enough, even though it's not his fault. I'm just angry it was her. Ha- ah. Craig, Craig, son. And an auntie get up, got up and went like that. Craig, son, come on. And she went up and she went like that. Craig, son, come, come on and out. And then Craig went like that to him. And she went, because right. it was like shite now. The farts were passing through the shite. The fart, the farts were passing through a shite. It was like pure shite now. And he went, I'm angry. I don't know how to, to, to I think the word is process. I don't know how to process it. I don't. I don't know how to process it. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I, I had something to say. Everybody, I need to be honest with you. I had something to say. I had another ten minutes. I've been practicing, rehearsing, but I'll be honest with you. 
I'm dying for a shite. I'm dying for a fucking shite. A few people laughed. Come on, now's, now's not the time. No, I'm wanting to be honest with you. Because this is how I feel. This is fucking real. How I feel, this is fucking real. And we've all been busting for a fucking shite. Have we not all at some point been busting for a shite? Aye, aye. But we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. And that's the same with fucking her. Pointing to her coffin. And that's the same with fucking him. And that was the same with me, how he wanted me to be. We don't fucking talk about it. I'm busting for a fucking shite. That's how I feel. And I know that you've been busting for a shite, and you've been busting for a shite, and you've been busting for a shite. Some people laughed. It's no fucking funny. What's the fucking score? We're hiding this fucking stuff that we know that fucking happens because you're scared of how you're going to fucking come across even you know you know what happens to fucking every cunt. I'm busting for a fucking shite. And my fucking auntie, my auntie Mary just fucking, my auntie, my auntie, my auntie Mary just go up there. And she's like, oh, oh, do you know fucking shit? Do you know they are fucking reading fucking fart, man? I'm busting for a fucking shit there, I fucking say that. Are you happy? What do you think of that, da? And, he, and he's just thinking, I fucked this, man. I fucked this. I fucked this. They're all looking back at me like He starts to walk off. Starts to walk off and he goes like that. And then somebody goes like that. You want a shite? You dare shite? If you want a shite, you dare shite. And he goes... I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm not going to be able to make it to that toilet, whatever the fuck it is. So you know what I'm going to do? And they'll go like that, they know exactly. They go like that, do it. He opens up the coffin. He opens up the other coffin. He shites on his dad. In the one that he shites in his da, he has the coffin lid that way so you can't see. It's a sort of coffin lid that sort of opens like that. You know, it's got hinges and everything. Opens like that. And then see when he went to his maw? For the second lot of shite. Because he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't feel right to just date to his da and know no more. Because remember, there was a da that went like that, bottle it up. Bottle everything up, always bottle up, bottle up, bottle up, and it was a more who because she bottled it up, she ended up that's what fuck, fucking happened to her. And he was ready to go to the other coffin, the most coffin, and they went like, turn that around, turn that around so the lid isn't in the way so we can see. So he turned the fucking whole coffin around, his most coffin around, on the wee stand thing, you know, like a wee kind of keyboard stand, turned it around like that. Because it's going to somebody on, and somebody came up. This is, this is somebody's twizzles around his ankles. Somebody came up. It was Auntie. Auntie came back up. Sorry, sorry about the fart thing. I, I don't like it. You go for it. Good, 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 good on you. And he turned it around, she went back to her seat. And then he got up and he shot on his maw. Where everybody could see. No, no, the lid was open. Everybody could see. And everybody went like that. And just as they thought he was finished. Everybody <laughs> laughing. Oh, 
and he was letting it all out and it just felt so good to go like that. This is me. This is how I fucking feel, man. And see after that. See after that. Anybody in that whole family and anybody who was there, they would all do that at the funerals. Anybody who did that, they would fart all the time and shite all the time, wherever they went. And just let it out and they would talk about, obviously, that's to do with like mental health and all that. They were, they were dead open. After that, they were dead open. I put it all. It was good to talk to them because it's, they're dead open about uh, the mental health and all that because they'd opened up. But they're also humming. Humming a shite. Ladies and gents, thank you very much. The end. Paul Basso, thank you very much for the sub. Jay Dafters, thanks for the six month three sub. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Glad you like. Glad you like that touching story. Touching story. Touching cloth. <laughs>